Hello everybody, Dr. Powers here. Uh, in this short video, we're gonna go over module five assignment, uh, the rubric and what you're asked to do in Excel and how to set up a hypothesis test and all that fun stuff. So let's get to it. In this project or assignment, you're, you are approached by this, this uh, salesperson who wants to claim in an advertisement that the average cost per square foot of home sales in the it, that he makes is uh, greater than the average for the Pacific region. So, in other words, the two hundred eighty dollars—that's the average that the salesperson makes cost per square foot. Uh, the Pacific region is a population. We don't know the true population mean for the Pacific region. So the the claim is that the the unknown mean for the Pacific region is less than $280. Okay? So the so we're going to perform a a simple random sample from some data to simulate having 750 uh, listing prices or specifically the cost per square foot for these and we're going to run a hypothesis test to see whether there is evidence to support this claim that the mean is in fact less than $280. So let's get into it and see what we need to do. The first thing is we're going to use the house listing price by region document. I'm going to open this up in Excel. All right. Uh, now there's a different tab for each region of the country and we're doing all of this on the Pacific region. So go to the Pacific region and we only care about cost per square foot for this assignment. I'm going to just go right ahead and delete column D and I'm going to delete column O. Oh, <laughs> those are calculated automatically. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I guess I'll, I'll leave that as is. I'm going to put in my random numbers, random Remember, we create random numbers using the formula equals R-A-N-D, and then parenthesis, open and close. I'm going to take this, copy it, and we're going to paste that all the way down. I have to go all the way down to row 1,000 and something. Uh, 1,000 and... Da, 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 da. Okay, here we go. 1,006. Oops. All the way, 1,006. Now I have a bunch of random values. I'm going to use data. I'm going to sort by call um, by my um, random number smallest to largest all right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new tab and I'm going to copy my uh, let's see I need 750 of these so I think it might be easiest if I start enumerating them uh, start with One, two, three. I'm going to, this is going to help me just count down 750 rows. Okay, that's all I need. 750 is going down here. So these are the only numbers that I need. the numbers in this column. Or you know what might be just simpler is I'll just keep this 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 sheet as is, but I'm going to just delete everything beyond row 750 cuz I don't need those. Okay, 750. It's actually row 750 6 and down. Okay. Now in order to perform the hypothesis test, what I'm going to need to do first is make sure the assumptions are, uh, are satisfied for the t-test. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to look at the histogram of the cost per square foot. So I'm going to actually select column E and then go to insert a chart. I'm going to find the histogram chart. It's here, a statistics chart. Histogram. All right. This is the this is 
what the distribution of listing price uh, or, or sorry cost per square foot looks like as you can see this is a very right skewed distribution there's a long tail going out in the high end but the tail does not go far out in the low end this is right skewed now if we had a very small sample size this would be evidence that the data is not normally distributed and we should therefore not use the t-test however the sample size of 750 is so large that the central uh, limit theorem can kind of pick up the slack for us we can use the central limit theorem despite having a non-normally distributed data set so we want to say that in our write-up all right i'm going to proceed with the t-test everything is looking fine and dandy so we, in order to calculate our t-statistic and our p-value, we need to go through a couple different steps. The first is I need to get the, the, the mean, the sample mean. I need the sample uh, standard deviation and uh, sample size. I'm going to put all of these numbers right here. Uh, and then, of course, the sample size is 750. I'm going to put that in right there. This random, this random number column keeps updating. It's a little distracting. I'm going to hide it for now. The sample mean is found using the average function. I'm going to the average, let's see what happens if I select all of column E, if it's going to yell at me because there's some string stuff in there or if it's going to be okay. Oh, it looks okay. All right, that's easy. I'm going to stdev.s to get the sample standard deviation. And that's, again, I'm going to just select column E. And I'm able to do this because I deleted all the data I don't care about. Uh, so I've got the sample mean, the sample standard deviation, sample size. What I'm going to do is calculate the standard uh, error, and that is the sample standard deviation. I'm going to select that cell, hit divided by the slash, sqrt, the square root of select the sample size. This is the formula for the standard error of the mean, and that's going to be needed in the formula for the t-statistic. Okay, my t-statistic is, okay, here's what it's gonna be. The numerator is parentheses around it so that the division you know, doesn't mess up order of operations. Okay, I'm gonna take my sample mean minus the hypothesized mean, which remember it's 280 for this, for this uh, region. That's the, we're hypothesizing that the mean might be 280. We want to see how unlikely it would be to get a sample mean of 247 if the population mean happened to truly be 280. Well, let's find out. We're going to take that difference, divide it by the standard error. That gives me the t-statistic. Hit enter. That gives me a negative 5.7. I know my t-statistics a little bit, so I can tell you right away that this is extremely unlikely uh, to have occurred under the null hypothesis. Negative 5.7, the p-value, which is the likelihood of seeing data like this under the null hypothesis, it's going to be basically zero. Um, but we're going to calculate that, the p-value, and it's going to be calculated using t.dist formula. Um, I select my T, comma, my degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one, so it'll be 749, and then you have to say true for cumulative. This is going to calculate the cumulative probability up until and stopping at negative 5.7, so it's the left tail probability. Why left? Because I am, um, I am... Uh, my, because my alternative hypothesis, going back to the here, is that the average cost per square foot in the Pacific region is less than 280. Less than 280. So that's less than, that's a, a left-tailed uh, left -tailed test, so I find a left-tailed p-value. And this is how I do it. Calculate that. Like I said, don't get messed up by the by the uh, scientific notation. Let's just go up to formatting and put this in 
comma style, so it puts it as a decimal. And I'm going to expand the decimal places enough so that I actually see what it is. Look, it's point zero 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 eight five nine or eight five four. So it's it's this is very very small, extremely small, basically zero. Okay, what does this mean for us? That means that we have extremely strong evidence that in the Pacific region, the cost per square foot truly is less than two hundred eighty. So, in other words, the the agent, the sales agent, is completely justified in making a claim that his cost per square feet is above average, right? So all of this stuff needs to go into your port. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you the template now. All right, let's, so all of my work is here. I'll come back to it. Um, you've got the module five assignment template. Download that and you'll open that in Word. Remember when you're working on this, remove all the bracketed text before you submit. Put your actual name, and in all these sections, keep them left, left justified, don't, keep, don't get them centered. Um, when you're asked to write the null and alternative hypotheses, you want to use, uh, don't use the letter U for, for mu. Uh, there's, you, can, you can get the letter mu a couple ways. Um, you can find it somewhere written out. So um, let's see, is it here? No, it's, I sometimes do a Google search for mu, the Greek letter, and I take that and I copy it and then I paste it here. So I'm going to write the null hypothesis is that the mu is less than, is equal to 280 versus the alternative hypothesis uh, is that mu is less than 280. You can write it out like that. Now these should be subscripted, so I'm going to uh, click the button for subscripting those, the zero and the a. Uh, the other thing that you can do to get the mu is you can use uh, on the computer, at least on Windows, it might be different for Mac, Alt 230. That creates the the Greek letter mu alt two three zero. So you hold down the alt button, you type two three zero, and then you let go of the alt button, and then that that character will appear. This is please take the time to actually put in the Greek letter. Don't just say M U, and don't put the letter U because it looks a little bit like a mu. Take the time to actually make it look good. Also, define the population parameter. What's the population parameter? What unknown parameter in the population are we testing? The population parameter is not the sample size. It's not the sample mean. Uh, it is a pop it's a characteristic of the population that is unknown, right? Do I need to tell you? I'll let you figure that out for yourself. But be sure to, to write that there. Talk about what kind of test we're doing. I already really told you, but you need to talk about it. Don't don't give results for all three of the tests. Don't calculate all three p-values. Don't get a right-tailed, a left-tailed, and a two-tailed. Choose one of them, the one that is appropriate. Calculate that. Provide that in your in your results, right? Um, ooh, use the normal curve as a reference to describe where the p-value and test statistic would be placed. This is something I'm going to I'm going to use. My website called StatPowers, statpowers.com, um, and from here, I'm going to go up to the continuous, the student's t distribution. This is how I'm going to get a nice, uh, a nice image. I'm going to put in 749 for degrees of freedom. I'm going to find the probability in the tail below. Sorry, below negative five, which is what I had found. And that's actually gonna be off off to the left. So I'm gonna copy this image. And um, yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just paste it here. And I'm going to insert a little shape, um, put a little arrow. And I'm going to this is how I'm going to illustrate where the T statistic is found. I can insert a little text box and I'll, 
I'll I want to make this this in front of the text. Uh, did it? No, no, no. In front of text, and I'll say um, T stat. Something like this. This is going to illustrate to illustrate where in the distribution curve my observed test statistic is found. It's out in the far left of the tail. So you'll have to talk about your test decision. What's your decision? Do you reject the null hypothesis? Do you fail to reject the null hypothesis? And then finally, you need to uh, you know, base that on the p-value and the significance level. The significance level, as you know from the assignment, is given to you to use. Um, here in the prompt, you can see it says to interpret the results using a significance level of 0 0.05. So when you're writing this up, you're, you have to compare your p-value to the significance level. Don't compare the test statistic to the significance level. It's the p-value. So if your p-value is less than 0 0.05, then your conclusion should be to reject the null hypothesis. That's fine, but then you have to say, what does that mean? In the conclusion, talk about what does this mean in terms of the sales agent, the advertisement claim? Should it be able to go through? Is it justified based on what's observed in the data or not? That's going to wrap up your assignment. Beyond that, be sure to go through the rubric, look at all of these sections, and make sure you're satisfying everything required of you in the rubric. If you do, you will get 100% on this assignment, and I hope you do. All right. Bye-bye.